Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. Today, I would like to talk about the benefits of being a mentor. Bill, kick us off. Sure. I mean, I've, you know, I've had the, the opportunity on both ends, um, but I know, especially during my, my time in corporate, I mean, I really appreciated the opportunity to kind of work with those uh, who were just starting out. You know, it was more than just, hey, it made me feel good. I mean, it was really about watching these people succeed. And I always, you know, had a lot of... Um, pleasure in just seeing people do well and kind of afterwards when I would talk to them, you know, they, they would say, you know, they, they appreciated that piece. And, you know, and, and I kind of looking at your question, I mean, I, I work with a mentor now for my small business and it is interesting where it is a lot of give and take. I mean, there are things, the person you may be mentoring may be telling you stuff that, you know what, it is a different perspective and I appreciate that and it, and it does help. So it's not like, a mentorship is just one direction. A lot of times it's, 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 it's both ways. And I think, you know, both people can benefit from doing that. I ask a question. What do you ask? Do you define the fact that the relationship is a mentor mentee relationship up front, or does it just subsequently happen without any definition? If you're asking me, I know that again, early, when I, as a manager, as a director, and working with people, it was never really defined as mentor or mentee. It was just, you know, I think really working with them as a as a relationship and really offering to kind of help them. But it wasn't like it was like a defined piece, if that's your question. Hmm. That was my only thought when I saw the when I saw the original question is. Does it, does it need to be defined? Do boundaries have to be set up for it to be effective? I, I think of it kind of like, like a friendship. What do, at any point, do you ever sit there and go, oh, we are friends? Or do you just kind of realize that after time, you are friends? Mm. Um, when, I work with, when I work with my team, I, I, it's, it's coaching to me. But eventually, somebody comes to me and says, hey, you know, I really want to get into this role. And without saying, hey, I'm going to mentor you, I just start working with them about what they can start doing to get themselves ready to be in that position. Um, so I don't think it has necessarily has to be, hey, I'm, I'm your mentor, um, but I don't, I don't think I can go without saying that. Well, there's a lot out there where people say, oh, find, you know, young advice for young professionals, find a mentor, you need a mentor, you got to have a mentor. There's tons of stuff out there about that. And I feel like young people do go out purposefully seeking mentorship. And I don't know if it, if the reverse is true for those of us who are in a position to mentor people. Like, what does that look like? What are the benefits? Because it's not a paid position, typically. I, I look at it from my own standpoint. I mean, as far as when I either did it, and, you know, Brandon, to a degree, you're right, as far as what's the difference between coaching and mentoring. I think there is a delineation with that. But I do know that as you get to help people think about other opportunities, I think that's where the mentorship comes into it. I just know, as I said, I, you know, I work with a person now and I, again, I don't work with him. He's a friend, but I, I view him as a mentor because of the experiences he has. But, you know, if I use that as an example, I mean, it is a two way street. I mean, it is, there is a level of, I guess, congeniality where we're talking back and forth and, you know, we're learning from each other, but he, he is providing some thoughts as to where I should go forward. So that's, that's kind of how I viewed the question in that, you know, you kind of, you, you posed it where not just, it isn't just about goodwill. I mean, that's certainly an important aspect to it, but I mean, the, you know, I, I've learned from just talking to people, whether I was the mentee or the mentor, just as part of the conversation. So it's helped me in my own growth. Hmm. And how do you decide if someone's a good mentee for you? I think that in, in my experience, I've identified characteristics in a person that I think that they can take on positions of increased responsibility, whether they work for me or whether they're not in my direct chain of command. And for me, probably it's I see things in a person that I saw myself mm -hmm. at that chronological age. And I, I think I try to help them avoid the mistakes that I might that I made at that point. But I generally like to say up front, you know, I'd like to try to help you. I'd like to be a sounding board for you. And I like to say up front that you don't have to take my advice. Let me tell you the things that I know now that I wish I would have known on day one. And that kind of defines the relationship because at some point it's going to come to an end. Mm. And, you know, how does it come to an end? And if you define it up front, then you don't have to worry about, okay, how and when does it come in? Or do are they going to get upset because your advice didn't work? I mean, I think there has to be some boundaries. Otherwise, I, I, I don't know where the benefit's coming from for them. And then they're going to get upset with you. And if they're a friend, then uh, maybe it doesn't end well. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree, you know, Stuart, in your beginning, I mean, I, even if I look at trying to help mentor some of the people who I've worked with, uh, it wasn't like it was everybody. I mean, the, the, you know, to the, try to define the characteristic, I think there was a, there was a, an inquisitiveness, an eagerness, somebody who was really interested in kind of, you know, well, what else was out there? And, and, and you try to, you try to help, help push that along and foster that, um, foster that in them so that they can kind of continue. So it wasn't like every single person who ever reported to me, I'm going to be your mentor. Um, I mean, you're certainly working with them in that position, but it's a different level. I mean, and, and they seem to want to have this and you're like, okay, how do I help you? So, I mean, at least that's the approach that I, that, that I've kind of saw. To me, it's, it's almost like getting a job. Very rarely does the job go to you. You have to go to the job. So for me, if, if I'm working with somebody and they, they come to me and they, they say, Hey, I, I, I want some guidance on this or that I'm, I'm going to help them, but I'm not going to continue reaching out to them. I'm going to expect them to come to me. As long as they're coming to me and they're making that effort, they're scheduling time on my calendar for these conversations, that tells me that they actually care enough about this. So I'm going to work with them to the best of my ability. Uh, and that, that leads to this question. How much should you be available as a mentor? How much time is reasonable or expected or like what, what does it mean? I worked for a company once where they actually tried to formalize the mentor relationship and it got on the calendar and, you know, there were like four more activities that had to take place. And I would call it a failure mm. the way it worked because it was, all right, this, you have to be a mentor for this person and you're going to be a mentor. But I think really, as you talk about that relationship, the person that's a mentor has to want to be a mentor. Mm -hmm. They have to be empathetic. They have to be willing to listen, not just hear. And they have to be able to communicate in a way that a person can understand what it is they're trying to pass on. And if the mentor lacks the ability to do that, then I think that from step one, the relationship potentially could be a failure. And that's what I saw in the formalized process. Mm. So, you know, as you look at a group of 10 people, how many people would actually be an effective mentor? I don't know what the number is. Maybe, Robin, you know if there's a number of 10 out X out, how many 10 would be an effective mentor? But I bet the number's low. What about you, Brandon? What do you think? How much time do you think you should set aside in your calendar to be an effective mentor to someone? Is it a defined thing? I don't think it is defined at all. And I'm the type that, you know, I'll pick up my laptop and start working at like 3 a.m. So if if the person I'm working with comes to me early in the morning, late at night, because they, they have a spark of inspiration, they just want my feedback, I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think once you have that kind of relationship, it's... I don't know, in a way to me, it's, I'm, I, I love the whole mentorship, mentee relationship. Um, I, I think it's a beautiful thing when you can help somebody be guided through their, whatever it is that they're trying to do, through their school, through, you know, their professional life, whatever the case may be. Um, so I, I'm available all the time. Um, mm. I'm still available for individuals that I haven't worked with for years now. I, I think at a certain point, it, there, there reaches a breaking point, but I haven't hit that yet. Well, you know, it's interesting, you know, that Stuart mentioned the formalized process because I was involved once as a mentee in a formalized process. And, it, and you know, this person was assigned to me and they were an executive and, and she was real, you know, she was a, a very good person, but it wasn't quite the same as, as I've gone on in life where I've asked, you know, I've, I've reached out to somebody to, hey, help me and kind of be a mentor. And so I can't say at least at that point in time in my, <laughs> where I was, that, that that was probably the best approach. Um, I, I wish things would have been different, quite honestly, because I think she would have been a good person to ultimately do it. But it just it seemed a little contrived. I might have two people and, you know, one's good with an hour of lunch, you know, once a month. And, and you know, that's really all because they, they just want to kick some ideas out. Somebody else, you know, maybe they're really going through some things and you kind of want to help them. So um, I, I know that's not really an answer to your question as to a specific time. But I think it really does become down to an individual, both as the mentor in terms of their approach and the mentee. Like when I get together with my mentor, it's usually two hours, you know, every four or five weeks. And we're just, you know, we're, we're talking, we're talking about stuff. I mean, there's usually a specific reason why I'm meeting with him, but then we, we get on to other topics that kind of help, you know, help me frame things as we go along. So, I mean, that's kind of how I put it, but it's, it's, you know, I don't know if there is necessarily a defined period to it. Well, thank you for having this conversation with me. That is our 10 minutes. I appreciate it so much and I look forward to the next one.